Welcome to the Poetry Society of Texas. I'm Terry Jude Miller, your host for this episode. Today we feature Bud Powell Mayhem, a poet, editor, artist, photographer, public speaker, and actor who has been president of both the National Federation of State Poetry Societies and the Poetry Society of Texas. His work has won numerous awards that include the Stevens Manuscript Competition of the National Federation of State Poetry Societies, the John and Marion Morris Manuscript Competition of the Alabama Poetry Society, the Dallas Poets Community Chapbook Contest, and the Fort Worth Poetry Society's inaugural William D. Barney Memorial Chapbook Contest. The diversity, the insight, and the artistry of his poetry honors the society's enduring desire to promote the production and appreciation of poetry in all its forms. Bud's poetry has been described by Michael Baldwin, past president of the Fort Worth Poetry Society, as cerebral and always seeking the heart and reaching it. In the podcast today, we discuss Bud's book, Falling to Earth, which won the Edwin M. Eakin Memorial Book Publication Award. Welcome, Bud. I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you for being here. Where did you get your inspiration for the poems in this book? Uh, very painfully. I fell out of a tree, actually, is oh. how I got it, breaking my leg badly. And this book ensued during the uh, summer that followed because I had to have surgery. I later had blood clots and was hospitalized. This is just kind of a chronology of what happened from the moment I fell until late in the summer. Oh, my goodness. You're not supposing that all people need to break their legs to write a book of poetry as good as yours, right? Uh, no, I always laugh and tell people that is not the best way to get a book. It's really not worth it. It <laughs> kind of was life-changing for me in more ways than one. This book was life-changing, which was great. Some of the other aspects of life-changing weren't so great. I understand. Are there a mixed uh, or, or fixed format poems or free verse in this collection? It is exclusively free verse, and it, of course, was early in my career. I wouldn't really like to do a complete free verse book if I had been thinking about it at the time. I really now write a lot of form, and I like form. I actually wish there were some form in this manuscript, but it is completely free verse. Wonderful. Do you think it's easier for new poets to work in free verse than it is in form poetry? Oh, absolutely. You don't have to worry about any constraints. You just write what you think. And so it's much easier. And that's not actually how I began writing. I began writing in verse. My mind just hears verse. And all my first poems when I was younger were rhymed poems because I just rhyme easily. I think in, in joining the Poetry Society of Texas, I found out about free verse and started to write in free verse. All right. I've read a lot of your poetry since I joined the Society many years ago, and you've always been an inspiration to me. That's why I'm very, very excited to have you in this podcast. You've always been somebody I've admired, and your poetry is just inspiring and instructional. And I've also attended conferences in which you've given instruction about how to write good poetry. Could you tell us a little bit about the poem you're going to read for us today? Well, I decided just to read the first poem in the book, which begins the whole process, and it's called Falling. And this is it. Okay. I don't remember falling, just the moment after impact, when I failed to recognize that twist of leg as my own, suspended against a limb too high, I hung ripe as a soft peach, vulnerable as November's brown. It wouldn't be the same for leaves, no urgent pull of gravity, but a downward drift, a journey to be remembered. I lay in the shock of broken June, wondering at noon sky and a busy street that went on, the dull-eyed city focused on horizon, 
not noticing the wrong turn of my life, the shock of face, the splinter of composure. Oh my goodness, that's the wonderful poem. One thing that you've always coached is to have that strong ending in a poem. Why is it so important to have that strong ending like the ending on this poem? I think it tells, first of all, that you're going somewhere, mm -hmm. that you had a point in writing this poem. I often, I judge so much poetry for so many different groups. And you often find poems that start wonderfully and you get really excited about them. And they really seem like they are going somewhere. And suddenly the whole thread is lost and they kind of drift away into nothing. And you just go, I wonder what they were trying for here, and mm -hmm. why did this poem just die on the vine, sort of? Is that the error that most new poets make, is that they don't have a strong ending to their poem? Oh, I think it's very, very hard to have a strong ending, yes. And it's something you have to develop a skill for. But this is a question we ask everyone who is a guest on this podcast. Why is poetry important to everyone today? I think you have to have a way of exploring yourself and making a connection of yourself with other people. And I think you have to write from your own experience. And I think the most authentic writing that we do comes from our own experience. And the farther we go from that, the less authentic our voice becomes. And I don't think that finding your voice comes easily. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to continue to write, and it's not there when you first begin writing. It's something that you come to, and it's important to keep writing to find that voice, I think. That's, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful sentiment. I know that from my own personal Poetry was a salvation of sorts. So I understand completely what you're saying. How important is it for poets to participate in a poetry community, like the Poetry Society of Texas? I think writing in a vacuum doesn't offer you any chance for growth. And so if you were just sitting at home writing and you don't show it to anyone and it's all very personal for you, I don't think you ever grow. I think you just uh, stay in that little pocket. And that is great for some people. That may be exactly what they need to do. But if you're going to share your poetry, I think the interaction and the influence of other writers is probably the most important tool to uh, creativity. We can pick up good traits by association with other people. You know, it's almost like catching it. I know when I first started in the Poetry Society, I wrote these little rhymey things, and I didn't really get what other people were writing, but I started to be influenced by what they were writing, and I think my creativity just grew tremendously from associations and from picking who I thought were the great poets in the society and following them. We can also pick up bad. Mm -hmm. as well as good. Right. And I think right now, there is a very, honestly, there's a very bad thing that is going on in our society. And I've noticed in the societies of the National Federation, and that is these new poems that are newspaper articles. They mm -hmm. are a list of facts and figures that have no heart. They have no poetry. Mm -hmm. And they... And we seem to be influencing each other. We seem to be picking those poems. They can be long narrative stories about something that are not interesting. And I think that just like we pick up the good stuff, we can pick up the bad stuff. And I'm stressing this everywhere I speak now. Let's don't move into writing prose and call it poetry, what is happening a lot. We had a young poet at our last banquet, our poetry banquet, and a winner got up and read the poem. And I noticed him turn to his wife. And I was sitting several tables away, but I could read his lips. And he said, 
that is not a poem. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful. When somebody new coming in says that is not a poem, we need to really examine what is best that we are producing and what we admire in others and use that as a way to grow and not get caught up in whatever is current, which I don't think is poetry. Right. You're absolutely right. I've asked the same question to people like Tony Hoagland, and he said that if poetry doesn't have musicality and internal meaning, then it's not really poetry. Right. You know, so you're absolutely right. And, and thank you for bringing that message forward. Bud, it's been a great pleasure to share this time with you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a Poetry Society of Texas podcast featuring Bud Powell Mahan. Visit the website at poetrysocietyoftexas.org. The podcast producer is me, Terry Jude Miller. Music provided by Ed and Nim Frita. Technical editing by J. Darrell Kirkley. Visit us again for another episode of the Poetry Society of Texas podcast.